Hello and welcome. Today I would like to show you our starter set for leaf cutter ends. Leaf cutter ants are found in South and Central America, from Chile and Argentina to the southern United States. The two genera of leaf cutter ants are called Atta and Acromyomex. Leaf cutter ant species live from a self cultivated fungus, which is cultivated by the workers using the collected leaves and flowers of plants as well as fruits. Generally, both genera form very large colonies, from tens of thousands of individuals in Acromyomex and up to several million in Atta, which increases the need in terms of space and food. They also require different climatic conditions within the formicarium to develop successfully. However, if you pay attention to these values and provide enough space, they are also suitable for beginners. Especially nice to look at are the long entrails on which they carry plant parts to their fungus. They have different sized workers which perform different tasks and Atta even has strong soldiers. In addition, leafcutter ants do not hibernate, which makes them interesting to observe all year round. This is the small starter set variant we offer. Like the big set, it consists of a food chamber, a fungus chamber and a waste chamber. All have the size 20 by 20 centimeters. The large version is basically identical in content and structure. Only the basins and the diameter of the connecting tubes are larger. Also, the large starter set comes with a clear basin to tube connector already. The small set will also include these in future. In the food chamber, fresh leaves are placed for the ants. The ants cut up the leaves, chew them and make them a breeding ground for their fungus. In the fungus or nest chamber, you need to pay attention to humidity and temperature. These should be 70 to 19 percent and about 24 to 28 degrees. Fungal debris, deceased animals or food scraps are placed by the ants in the waste chamber. The set also includes three escape protection frames which prevent the ants from escaping. To make the basins completely safe, there are additionally the lids. With these two acrylic pipes with a length of 50 cm and connectors, the three basins are being connected. Then there is the matching soil rainforest for ideal fungal growth. Granules, photoback walls for decoration, plugs and grid inserts to close the holes in the lids and basins, thermohygrometer to measure the temperature and humidity, a drinking throw and the outbreak protection oil for the frame and a sponge to apply the oil. A pair of plastic tweezers for gripping solid objects, for example leaf debris, and a pair of spring steel tweezers for gripping the animals without hurting them. A magnifying glass, a spray bottle for mystening the fungal chamber, and a pack of rose petals as food. First we can connect the three basins with the pipes. For this purpose, the pipe connectors are inserted into the lateral openings and screwed from the inside with the nuts. The remaining openings on the two outer basins can be closed with the two 27 or 50 mm plugs. For the large starter set, make sure to place the sealing rings on the first step of the connector. It is best not to push them completely onto the first step, so that the sealing ring does not slip onto the next step and block when the pipes are put on. Be careful when you put the pipes on and use lightly screwing movements or escape protection oil to make it easier. And then we can fill in the soil rainforest. Don't fill it in higher than 2 mm. We only fill the fungus chamber because substrate in the other two chambers makes cleaning difficult. You can do this as you wish. The peat fibers contained in the substrate provide good support for the fungus and store moisture, which is very important. After that, we place some granules in the tank. This helps the ants to transport moisture from the drinking through to the fungus and in case of too much moisture from the fungus to the waste chamber. In this way, the animals can regulate the necessary humidity themselves. You can best place the watering through near the nest, by the fungus or in the food chamber. The thermohygrometer comes near the fungus to measure the temperature and humidity. You can attach it to the inner border of the frame. 
If it is attached too far on the outside, the frame will no longer fit on the basin. Be careful because the glue is very strong, so you only have one try. Next, coat the frame with the escape protection oil. To do this, simply cut the tip of the bottle, put a little oil on the sponge, a household cloth or your finger, and coat the underside of the frame with a thin layer of oil all the way to the corners. Then we can put the frame on top of the basin. Please check again if the frame seals really tight. After that, the lid can be placed on the frame and the openings can be closed with the plugs or grid inserts. The plugs go into the cover of the fungus chamber to keep the necessary humidity here and the grid inserts into the cover of the two outer basins to achieve good air circulation in the setup. That's why the fungus chamber should always be placed between the food and waste chambers. The fungus should also never stand in water and condensation from the lid should not drip too much onto the fungus. This would be a sign of too high humidity. Now only the leaf cutter and colony is missing. In our case, we take Ata Mexicana. First, we spray a little water on the bottom of the basins. The fungus should be placed in the center of the basin. Make sure that you never spray water directly on the fungus. It is important that you have a small plastic container that you can cover the fungus with. This makes it easier for the ants to maintain the necessary microclimate around the fungus. It should be covered until it fills at least one third of the basin. You should cut the plastic container slightly on one side so that it is easier for the ants to carry leaves to the fungus. Now that the ants have moved in, the only thing missing is the food. The following should be noted when feeding. You can take leaves of blackberries, raspberries or various other rose plants. You can find a detailed overview on our website about possible feeding plants. In this case, I have now taken blackberry leaves. To keep the leaves fresh, you can put the branches simply in a small vase or jar with water. With large colonies, this is no longer necessary because the ants consume their food in a short time anyway. With very small colonies, calmly always place a few leaves in the fungus chamber or even directly on the fungus. This makes it easier for the colony to start cutting and collecting leaves. Additionally, and especially in winter, you can also feed our dried rose, mallow or sunflower blossoms. These colorful leaves are not only well accepted by the ants, but they are also, visually, a real eye-catcher. Besides leaves, leafcutter ants also need fresh water at all times and regularly carbohydrates in the form of sugar or honey water. If the temperature or humidity does not reach the perfect values, you can plug into the openings of the lids, for example lamps, fans, foggers or other devices for climate control. A heating mat can also be placed at the back of the basins. However, these should in no case be placed under the formicaria. Otherwise, the soil will dry out and the fungus and your leafcutter colony will die. The small starter set is sufficient for up to two years. After that, you will have to expand the formicarium. Since the set is modular and you can freely combine larger and smaller tanks, it can be adapted to the needs of the colony at any time. The large starter set is sufficient for up to three years. In total, you should plan with a long-term area of around 3 by 3 meters. To connect the pipes, there are also L or T connectors which can be used to connect basins, even one above the other, or over long distances and around corners. Larger distances to walk usually let the colony develop better. The animals will now move the bottom substrate over time according to their needs or push it aside. Even if this is sometimes visually not very attractive, you should not correct anything here, but let the animals do their job. Only food remains and the waste from the waste chamber should be removed regularly.
I hope that I was able to give you a good overview of our solutions for keeping leafcutter ants. Thanks for watching and see you next time.